Are you yearning to wake up each morning and ignite a new meaning and purpose in life and beyond? Welcome, everyone. I'm Michael McGinnis, an award-winning author, speaker, and educator on human potential, and your host on You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Life presents us with challenges that serve as catalysts for growth. The pivotal question is, how do we respond to these challenges, or better yet, opportunities? Do we adopt a victim mindset or rise to become victors? Our goal here is to guide and inspire you to master the most amazing journey you have your life you can do it starts now hey everybody michael mcginnis here well i'm not sure if you'll have that same welcome for me when i tell you about today's topic but it's an essential topic otherwise and that's about our mortality right we're all going to die so the theme is, let's talk about it. In fact, I'm going to start with a quote from Psychology Today as I get into this episode, because I think it lays out sort of the current challenge associated with our mortality. And then I'll tie that in to the reason we want to sort of really get comfortable with this concept, particularly if we really want to achieve our true potential. And for those aspiring to enlighten, it's almost a critical, a must-have topic. But here's a, here's a quote from Psychology Today, sort of sets the tone for today's conversation. And bear with me, I'm going to be looking away from you for a second and reading through it. And that is, whether we like it or not, one of the only surefire things in life is that we are all going to die. What a powerful comment, right? Now, I'm interjecting right there. I'm power, Powerful comments start off with, right? And, and I know I probably lost half of you already. You said, ah, click, not going to listen to this because... As it applies here is we don't like talking about this topic, particularly in this culture. It says, it is one of the subjects that we in the West are discomforted by, embarrassed about, and that many of us avoid, and this includes avoiding the people who are experiencing grief or who are dying. Quite profound. We don't talk about death, it says. We talk about sex, drugs, money, and all of these other challenging situations. We teach our children about these topics, but we don't talk about death and dying. Death, at one point, was so common. In fact, in the 19th century, it was readily addressed. People wore black if they were in mourning and were treated accordingly. In fact, my interjection here is, is I recall that, you know, that period of time where people wore black for a year. You know, and that was to signify that they are in mourning, right? It was okay. It was all right. In fact, it was used to be able to let people know so that people can come and comfort you and talk about it because they knew that that's what was needed. It continues to say, <laughs> here it is. Uh, death was so common in 19th century that it was readily addressed. People wore black if they were in mourning and were treating accordingly. If people were dying, they planned the funerals with their family and everyone knew to express their condolences if they came across someone who was in bereavement. It seems we have got out of habit and the subject has become taboo. Again, that's from Psychology Today. And that's the thing that, hey, I'm willing to address about it. But that's what I want to talk about it is how did I develop my comfort level on this taboo subject. And we'll be talking about several occurrences that I had with people close to me dying that I learned from. And that allowed me to be in a space where I'm at today where I'm okay talking about it, right? I realize it's not the popular subject, popular comment, but you know what? Because we're experiencing it's, it's important to be able to address it, particularly with those that are impacted with it. And I will be talking about particularly with those who are dying. And it's all going to happen to us as well. So let's talk about the first occurrence that I had with death. I was 14 years old when my mom died from cancer. Yeah, quite young. It was traumatic at that point. Nobody talked about it. I remember even after it was done, the funeral, I returned back to school. It was like I had the plague. Nobody wanted to talk to me about it. I felt so alone as somebody going through that death. And what compounded it was is the fact that this is I was left with my father, who was the abuser in the family. And I left there with nobody to be able to talk about. I couldn't talk to him. 
You know, he had to do all of the talking about it. He was the one who was was there. In fact, he even said to me that us kids were to blame for the death of my mom, right? So out of this became this very twisted orientation and view towards death. It was something I deathly feared. Can you do that? Deathly fear death? Talking about death? Well, I guess so, because I was scared. Nevertheless, I was afraid about this concept of death. It was something that people didn't talk about. And yet, here I was at 14 years old, trying to deal with this incredible array of emotions, right, that happened as a result of it. But there was another occurrence there that also was important in my experience with my mom's death. And it occurred on the night that she was dying. Well, I didn't know that at the time, but the nurse had come running to us. There was a group of our family was staying in the hospital because we anticipated her death would be coming soon. And the nurse looked, nurse looked freaked out when she came in. She said, you got to come in. Got to come into this room. And we had in there. And here was my mom who was in a coma, raspy breathing. The last time I saw her, just literally a few hours before. And here she was sitting up in her bed, had her glasses on, smiling, looking at the bus. And she was doing her goodbyes. And she used this words that she expressed to me when she was saying that is, I'm going to be 100% better. Well, of course, I connotated that with, this is a miracle. She's going to get better. And literally within a few moments after she put her head back down, she was dead. So distorted my view, but I'm going to come back to that experience because it really was a profound experience in there with her. But again, it took conversation later on to do that. Experience two is, is while young and growing up in the traumatic childhood, if you recall from my uh, earlier podcast, you know, it was a very troubled family uh, and and as a result of that, all of us kids left life, you know, really screwed up in some ways. It's probably the best way to say it bluntly, you know, low self-esteem and challenges and issues uh, that come from growing up in a highly dysfunctional family. But my brother committed suicide. There again, another word, right? Profound word. Oh, we don't use that word. We don't like that word. We want to use that word. But he did. He did. Okay, that was his way of being able to process with it. Was it difficult and everything on us? Yeah, now I've come to terms with that because I dealt with it. I went, sought out counseling and I had conversations sort of understand, you know, what prompts people to sort of make this really tough call, right? A permanent call in effect on that too. But it was another experience around death. And then my third experience this came from, I started to volunteer and I didn't realize it at that time, but all of the common denominator of the volunteer experiences had to do with death. Later on, I realized that in their conscious or subconscious way, I was choosing these things to start confronting with death. I really wanted to understand it. Ever since my mom had died and my brother took his own life, I wanted to understand this thing called death and nobody was talking about it. And so I started to volunteer. And one of those opportunities early on was in a children's oncology camp. And that's where children who have cancer at a very young age come to a camp, a summer camp. There was an international camp in upstate New York where I had grown up and lived for many, much of my life. Uh, and it was where these children who came in with cancer could come to a safe place and be able to be with other children who had cancer in a way to be able to get a sense of community and for them mostly just to be kids again. Because the rest of the days that they had to be in hospitals and getting treatment and what a blessing it was to be able to be a part of camp where these children who were real children, you know, could come and be children. But all of them would talk about is, is that no other kids wanted to talk to them. Imagine that treatment at a very young age, because again of our phobia or fear of death, that we're not even confronting and talking with them. And yet it was this place that allowed them the comfort of being able to talk about death. 
And as a counselor for these children, it was one of the things I was aware of that I would have to be comfortable in that capacity because the children might want to come and talk about their dying. And that's what happened. And yet three separate occurrences, and that's one of these highlights from this experience about it. Yeah, I'm joking, smile about it because that's the new comfort level I have around death today. And it goes way beyond that. And I'll just barely be able to touch on it, but we'll be having a series on this topic, which is gonna further this conversation. So for those who want to develop that comfort around death, this is going to be the place. We're going to start talking about it. Well, in that case, during that time, I had three different children on three different weeks. So they didn't know each other. Uh, and they talked to me. They wanted to see if it was okay to talk about something personal. And it ended up being about the concern about death and dying and questions about it. Well, of course, I told them right up front, I said, I, I, I'm just a person. I'm not going to have answers to that, but you're very comfortable to talk about it. So share their experiences with it. And one talked about, you know, it, that they were in the hospital and they said, I can't talk about this at home. I'm scared to talk about this. And I'm even scared to talk about you, Mike, with this over here, but you said it's okay. And I said, yeah, anything goes. And they said, but I saw an angel. An angel was in there and they talked to with me, right? And not going through the specific, I don't remember all of the specifics, but that was the essence of it, right? And they just wanted to be able to be okay and acknowledge of it. Well, again, these are all things that are helping me because I would have to digest all of these things throughout my own life. Another one, very similar case, except they had a named entity. I saw the mother Mary and my mother had comments and words to them about the situation and about the die about death and dying, you know, and then there was a third situation. It was a very similar occurrence. Okay, just imagine hearing these things over here, right? And initially, you could write them off. Oh yeah, they're just hallucinating. Maybe it was a drug that they were under. But three three times hearing similar kinds of things from totally different groups, so they had no touch base with each other on that too. You know, again, it started to put in the, into my cap. Here's something to remember to think about. Well, it was also during that case, and you'll see a picture here of my uh, exposure to this wonderful young woman uh, who is from Poland. It was an international camp, so they had international groups as well. And she, the same thing, she was very comfortable talking about death. And I asked her, I said, this is different. What are you doing? She goes, no, it's okay at home. We talk about that, those kinds of things. And they go, oh my God, wow, that's different. We don't hear. Uh, and she started to talk about, you know, how some of her friends, because she'd gained friends with her fellow, uh, fellow children, fellow kids that were in the hospital together. And they formed this really close alliance over time because they were only ones that, they could talk with in the context of in the hospital. And then, but fortunately, there were others within the family that they could talk to as well. Well, she, with that level of comfort, would talk to me. And, you know, I was okay with the concept, but I wouldn't say I was high ranking and comfort level with it yet. But through this experience, it started to get me comfortable. I said, oh my gosh, she's comfortable talking about the fact that she'll potentially die with this and at a young age. And so much so that it was about a year later, I promised the children from Poland that I would come over and visit them. So I had traveled to Poland and I did. I met with them and I met with their families and I met with, her name is Beata. I think I'm pronouncing that right, Polish name. Uh, and uh, she had shared a poem, What Cancer Taught Me. I was in tears listening to it. And I was amazed that how could this human being be so okay with her death and actually appreciate the fact that cancer had taught her so many life lessons early on. It was incredible. It was amazing experience. But again, what's happening, notice what's happening here. It's beginning to start getting the conversation going about this taboo subject that we have here in the West, death. Well, let me zip forward a few more years. And I was volunteering as an EMT on ambulance. 
don't guess what I'm going to experience, right? Death. And certainly enough, did. And I'd be in the hospital in that setting and I'd be transporting them and they would be in the back of the vehicle dying or already dead, right? Profound experiences in terms of being able to be up close and personal to death and mortality. While well, I was here, mm -hmm. then I realized it happens all of the time. And that I was a volunteer on ambulance, but very often, you know, I'd come to an ambulance or to an accident scene, and there would be cases about death, morbidity. Wow. You know, so I started to realize that, wow, this is commonplace. You know, it's something that when we whisk home, we never talk about these topics. We maybe see it on a movie or a show or TV show, but that's a TV show, right? It doesn't, we don't, we can write it off as not real because we can flip the channel or we can just perceive it as something behind the television set, right? Which is what happens subconsciously. But an ambulance, you, you approach it in person. So that started to get us talking about death. And who was the us in this case? It was the other EMTs particularly the volunteers, we started to talk about it, you know, and it was this incredible bonding that we had as ambulance providers or EMTs, emergency metal te technicians, is, is that we all said this was having an impact on our life. And it was helping us in a strange way because it was realizing that any day or time, this can happen. And in the morning, a lot of people woke up only to finding themselves dead that afternoon and not plan for that, right? It can happen at any time. Well, that drove me into another volunteer opportunity in hospice care. This, I would highly recommend for anybody that really wants a crash course in learning about death, which probably means, no, you probably don't want to experience it if that's your viewpoint towards it. But what a great way to really get an understanding of death and dying than to be with those who are death and dying, particularly when it's not your own family and relatives. And that was the great part about it. You know, there was enough detachment with it that I could sort of step back and learn rather than being so emotionally involved, it was my own family or relatives. Well, it was here that the volunteers, we'd get together. And once again, we talk about how much this really had an impact on our life and what we were exposed to and how many life lessons it taught us. Well, this is where it started to gel. I actually wrote a blog post about this and is, is life's final performance appraisal, right? We get annual performance appraisals at work in terms of how well we're doing. Well, guess what? People are in hospice. They don't have any more runway. They only have a rear view mirror to reflect on their life. And when you're there to hear about their reflections, which is we are as volunteers, to allow them to let them talk about what they want to. And guess what? They were talking about the reflection and mostly the regrets. Well, we learned about life intensely. And it was from here that we realized, wow, there's really value to being around those dying and they want it. They really want that connection. They're on their way out, yet they're still a human right up until their last breath. And the just the touching of hands and the, just the little connections that you have with them, the interest and the smile, and even a sense of humor to break up the, the toughness of the situation, you know, was what the human element wanted. And we're all gonna be there again, right? I know that stuff. I know it's a tough subject, but it's powerful that we really have these kinds of conversations because they allow us to get more comfortable with this concept. Well, I'm gonna zip ahead because there was a profound instance that really emerged in my life that started to synergize this whole concept of death. A friend of mine, Tom, I was living in Rochester, New York at the time. Um, and he was a great mechanic and uh, he did his own work on cars. He was working on his car in a driveway and the car fell and crushed him. Now, while I was there and the ambulance arrived and he was pronounced dead on the scene. Well, they transported him to the hospital and it was about 30 minutes later that all of a sudden he revived. 
right? Which, you know, you probably heard the idea, right? Is this eight minutes and your brain is dead and there's no coming back. Well, this was a lot longer than that. And, and he revived and he came back. But it was me getting to know Tom because Tom had the classic what's called near-death experience. Oh, I know it again. You know, people have their own viewpoints about those kind of things. But it's a whole different story when it's somebody you know. And so as I came to know Tom, uh, and I listened to his stories afterwards and who the person he became afterwards and the insights that he still recalled from his near-death experience, it all of a sudden started to change my tune and attitude about death. There's something to it. And over time, I started to attend some of the IANS meetings and International Association and Near-Death Studies I met with more near-death experiences because it was so intriguing. I had to know more. And collectively, all of these experiences allowed me come to this point where I could start having discussions about death. And Tom, of course, helped me so much learn about this experience that even a few months before that, I know you wouldn't have had any of you. He admitted he's an ag he was an agnostic you know, until that experience. And so now it's at a point where I'm comfortable talking about it. I've actually used it as a catapult for me to go and continue to research these things, to learn more about death. To the point is, this is again, I know everybody has their viewpoints on things, whether it's religious or otherwise, I've developed my own. And that is, is, I know as much as a person can know. I didn't have a near-death experience, but so I can't say I know. I strongly believe and trust it with all of my heart that there really is something after death. And it came from this collective set of experiences where I allowed myself to get exposed to death. And I can say now, now I'm not on my deathbed, so I can't speak for that actual experience. But what I can say is, is that there's a great likelihood that coming close to that experience, I definitely don't have the fear of death anymore. I don't want to die. I'm not going to force that. You know, I'll let it happen when it happens. But I feel like I really am more comfortable with it now having a better grasp and understanding of death and having researched it, and I continue to do that today. So we're going to continue some discussion on this for those that want to, and I'd strongly encourage you to be a part of this, to just listen in. You're going to form your opinions. But remember, back in series season one, episode one, is said that one of the critical elements for those to achieve their full potential is that you got to have an open mind. You got to open yourself up to be able to rid yourself of these old unhealthy beliefs and things that we've stored within us that limit our perceptions on life. What I can say clearly is, is now having pursued me becoming my full potential and moving through the stages of personal growth self-discovery and enlightenment as I shared in that image with the tree analogy is, is that it's all helped me to evolve as a human being, to grow in my perspective on things, to open my mind to different things that, hey, I was a skeptic and skeptics make the best believers, right? That expression. And so what I would do rather than close down on a topic and say, oh, that's BS. Oh, that's this and that. Or everything else. I always made it a point to further research it, to learn about it and more. And it's at that point of which is that comfort level. Well, I'm not alone. I've now met many others who have really achieved that same level of comfort with it. And you find them, right? They're the nurses. They're the volunteers in, in the hospice care and uh, the writers and the blogs and the co conversationalists about uh, death and dying today. Most importantly, my suggestion to all of you is, is that understand that it's a taboo subject. Understand that it's a topic that brings with it a lot of uncomfort. But break through that with that realization that it's going to happen to you. 
There's nobody I know that's ever not experienced their death, mortality. So there's no escaping it. So what would you say to somebody? You know, well, if you if you can't get around it, you know, might as well learn about it. Same thing here. And the way to do that is to start having conversations about death. I'm not saying that you have to believe me or any of the beliefs that I'm formed with this. What's more important is, is having conversations about it, opening up your mind, getting through some of that discomfort with it so that you can come to your own. Because the major win on the other side is, is that if you can achieve that level of comfort around death and not have that be this albatross fear hanging around our neck, that we're scared to death, which has this huge psychological impact to how we live our life, right? Because we're so scared of doing anything with risk of anything else, because God forbid we die, right? And it holds us back. Well, in order to achieve your full potential, you got to break through those barriers, You've got to be able to be okay because it's going to be taking risks. It's going to be confronting obstacles and challenges. Look at those who climb Mount Everest. Well, guess what? There's several people who died climbing Mount Everest. So is that going to make everybody else run away and never do that again? Some, yes. Or those who say no. In fact, I'm going to embrace that opportunity. I'm going to learn from that. And I'm going to risk that challenge, right? What a great way sort of reverse this approach and mindset and attitude that we have towards death. So everybody, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening in. I hope if you've made it that far, this far in the conversation and you've hung in there, I give you a pat on the back and please give yourself a pat on the back because I'm not there to do that because you've listened to a conversation about something that many people don't want to hear anything about. We'll continue to have that conversation as we go forward. I'll get in depth into some of these amazing aspects that I learned about being with those dying and the concept of death itself. And again, it'll be for you to open up your mind to or not. I'm not trying to push on anybody the belief or things that I've developed, as I had mentioned here, but just open your mind and come to grips with it. There's some wonderful videos, by the way, on YouTube that have to deal with death and dying. And I, one I, outstanding, I can't remember the name of it, but it's where a father and son got together and the son agreed to videotape the last phases of his dad's life. And it started, you know, when he was still able to get around a little bit move around but slowly the course of the disease made it harder and harder and he made a videotape about that there was like twenty-three thousand comments i recall on that video of people all just a testimony to thanks for sharing this you know it helped me confront this concept of death so wishing you the best everybody Mostly take advantage of living while you've got that choice to live. It's a great research project to motivate you to want to learn. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and to be continued. I'm Michael McGinnis, and you've been listening to You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Tune in every second and fourth Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Transformation Talk Radio. As a recognized educator, author, and speaker on human potential, let's learn together how to make the most out of this life and to put a ding in your universe. This is the incredible journey of personal and spiritual growth, self-discovery, and enlightenment. For more information, visit growhumanpotential.com.